the way forward too. Um, so I want to talk about how to compute volumes. <clears throat> so it seems like we invented intervals to find areas. Um, but then once you come up with them, you realize uh, you realize that they can do so much more without inventing new things. So how do you compute a volume? Um, well, kind of like with a with an area, there's some shapes that I'm pretty sure I know the volume of. Um, if you have a rectangular box. Uh, with sides A, B, and C, the volume is A times B times C. Or, I guess, um, if you have a cube, um, the volume is A cubed, hence the name. <clears throat> um, and I think, so then the problem comes with, just like with areas, you, when you try to find the volume of a potato, um, I don't know how to draw a three-dimensional potato. Uh, I, nah. <clears throat> so, um, so the trick is to is to approximate your uh, figure with uh, simpler shapes, um, and I guess we could do cubes, but I don't want to do cubes. I want to do a bit better. I want to do cylinders um, because for a cylinder. I know the um, I know the volume as well. So the volume is the well. It's this formula, right? But it's the is the area of the base times the height. And if you take and this works not just for uh, circular cylinders. Um, If you take a cylinder that's um, not necessarily round, so say, so what's a weird shape? Um, take this shape. So what do I mean by a cylinder? I mean, you have the same shape twice at a certain uh, height between them in parallel planes, and and you join them by a straight wall. So, the volume is still the area of the base times the height. <clears throat> so, um, okay. So, well, first of all, I guess I know how to compute every area in the world because I can do intervals now. Um, and yesterday I was talking about basically how to do every area. So, um, so I guess I can do the volume of every cylinder because that's just multiplying an area by by height. So I'm happy with just having to do uh, volumes. So, um, so.
say so this is supposed to be a three dimensional shape um What chart is that? I think it was just in the UK. Um, <clears throat> so, this is some shape I want to compute the volume of. Yeah, I'm not happy with that picture at all. It's some shape. Um, so, what I can do is, um, well, I guess, put, some, put it in some coordinates and then choose a direction and in that direction, fill it with cylinders. So um, it will look like, um, I guess from the side, it will look a bit like a staircase. And then it looks, oh. so these are the, um, the bases of the cylinders. And what you see mostly is the sides. So that's not how it goes. Yes. All right, well, this is what I'm trying. Um, I'm drawing, I'm drawing this shape, except, you know, these ones, the, all the sides as well, they're all round and they're, uh, they're all round and their their sizes are increasing linearly. But um, if you think of different shapes, that's what I'm thinking. They're all stuck in a skewer. <coughs> and you choose the sizes so that they approximate your shape. Um, so, um, stop your shape with um the cylinders whose base is not round and then well the the volume is going to be more or less the sum of the volumes of the cylinders So, um, so what does this volume look like? Um, well, each, so pick one of these. Um, what is the volume? The volume is the area of the base times the height I guess it's on its side I don't know why I drew it on its side um, 
So the height is sideways. Um, so, um, well, I mean, that's what it is. The sum for every cylinder, you sum the area of the base and you multiply by the height. Um, so if I call this direction, if I call it X, this, um, I guess I, I can say that um, A of X is the area of uh, the slice at the coordinate X. So, um, if I have my shape here, if you fix X, you get sort of like a, I mean, exactly like a, what do you call it, a CT scan? When they, they look at slices of your brain and for each, you know, the X-ray machine uh, takes an X-ray here, an X-ray here, an X-ray here, an X-ray here, I think. And then for each height, you get an image. Um, so here I'm saying, look at the area of that image. So this is the function A of X. And the height, well, the height is just, um, the change in the x coordinate for example if all the if all the slices were the same size which they could be the same uh, width i would be just splitting an interval into n equal pieces and taking one end of the length of the integral and the thing is what i wrote here uh this is a riemann sum which doesn't mean I'm going to start computing Riemann sums. It means that it can be computed the limit, the limit as I make the slices smaller and smaller approaches uh, the integral. So, <clears throat> there's an integral that computes the volume. Any questions? Okay, uh, so what I just said is if you take some shape and you say that A of X is the area of a slice um, with um, fixed x coordinate, then the volume. So if I fix x, there's all these points with. Um, with a uh, fixed coordinate and the area is A of X. And then if I choose a different X, I get a different shape, I get a different area. The volume of the shape turns out to be the definite integral of this area. So, um, so let's, um, let's use this. So you've been told what the volume of the sphere is. But I doubt that you know why, why, if, um, why the formula 
is uh, for the spiral cube. So let's see why. Um, so I mean, this was this was known two thousand years ago, which is pretty incredible since they definitely didn't have integrals. Um, so you want to take the sphere. Ugh, I'm gonna do slides. No. You want to take the sphere. Say um, a radius one. We could make it radius r, and we would get. And I'm gonna well, I'm gonna put it at the at the origin. And what I gotta figure out is well, when I slice it, in this case, I get a circle. So A of X is going to be the area of this circle. So um, this distance is X. Um, I guess I want to know what the radius is of, the, of this circle. Seems like it as as you increase x when when x is zero and you're cutting the the biggest slice you get uh, well you get radius one and then it seems to be getting smaller eventually it becomes zero so let's try to figure that out um, so you have a sphere and you have a distance x and you chop a circular slice here what is the radius and i know the radius of the sphere is one so um <clears throat> What I, uh, so my three dimensional picture is kind of, I mean, three dimensional pictures are hard. So why don't we make it two dimensional? Um, by taking a knife and cutting in this direction. So um, when you slice it, the sphere becomes a circle and it slices through the center. So there's a circle of radius one. Now, um, this is, um, well, this is some flat plane. So I had a circle going this way and I'm slicing this way. So what I get is a line. I guess another thing you would, would say is instead of slicing it, look at it from the side. And then um, this distance looks like X. Uh, this is the R that I want to know. And well, this is a right angle. So these are the legs of a triangle, of a right triangle, whose hypotenuse is the radius, so it's one. So this tells me that r squared um, plus x squared equals one. So if I wanted to solve for r, it's the square root of one minus x squared. 
which makes sense. If you make x equals zero, you're cutting through the center, r is one. If you make x equals one, you're that's the point where you leave the you're not but your slice is not touching the ball anymore. You you get uh, r equals zero, and then it's decreasing in between. So um, the red circle has radius um, r equals root of one minus x squared. Um, So uh, the area is pi r squared. So it's pi times the square root of one minus x squared squared, which is the absolute value um, of r, but r is positive, so it's just r. So that's the area. So um, the volume of the sphere is the integral well x so the the endpoints are when x is one and negative one and positive and negative and then i'm supposed to integrate this area so i'm supposed to integrate Pi times one minus x squared. And now this is the part that's uh, in your exam. Well, I can pull the pi out. And, and what's this integral? I need to integrate one minus x squared. All right, thank you, Matthew. Uh, yeah, the, the antiderivative um, is x minus x cubed divided by 3. And we have to evaluate that from a negative 1 and 1. So when you take the derivative of this function, you get x1 minus x cubed, x squared. Um, so This is pi times one minus one third minus pi times negative one. All right, be very careful. There's so many negative signs. Negative one cubed divided by three. So that's pi times two thirds um, minus. Um, and this is negative two thirds. So that is pi times four thirds, which is the, the volume of a sphere. So now you've known this all your life, but now you know why. <clears throat> and if we, if, we, if we had made it, um, if we had made the volume, the, the radius r, we would, we would get our cubes in there. It's, Pretty much the same thing. Um, do you have any questions? <laughs> How do you know? Uh, yeah. So. 
how I know that I'm supposed to interpret between negative one and one is that I have my sphere and I'm saying this is the x coordinate. So I said x is zero at the center. So what is the biggest x on the sphere? Uh, and those are the ones I need to, uh, those need to be my bounds. So, um, well, these are, um, what do you call these? Because they're not the poles, because they're in the, they're on the sides, but, but you know what these points are. Uh, you know that the, the distance uh, between these two is the radius, uh, and that's one. So, to find the, the endpoints, in this case, uh, you go one to the right and one to the left. from the center. Which we decided was x equals zero. So um, you get negative one to one. And that's how. <clears throat> Any more questions? Wait, um, so should I do another volume or should we call it be another course and do review for the rest of the the hour. I will review. All right, so, um, is there anything? Is there any questions or problems you'd like me to go through? Um, click on the review worksheet, could be from anywhere. I mean, if there's nothing that needs reviewing, then there's no point in this. It'd just be more fun to compute the volume of the cone. No, <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't that be fun if I saw the thing and put it in the exam half an hour later? Uh, this is so the exam is up to chapter five. Also, you're going to see the exam in twenty minutes. Um, so. 
so the, the last thing on the exam is your substitution. So what I did yesterday with the area between two curves is not on the exam and the vol volumes are not either. Can no one has questions? I guess you're so confident. I mean, I'm sure you're going to do great, to be honest. That is uh, my actual feeling. Did you go over 16G? Uh, I think I, it doesn't make a bell. 16G um, is. This one? No, I haven't. Uh, I haven't gone over that one. All right. <clears throat> so um, this integral. So I can think of two ways to do it. How should I how should I go about it? I was just thinking like just put in the X's before you elaborate on the process. What do you mean put in the X's? Like before you use the equation for integrals, you just make it like x cubed plus one squared or something like that. Ah, uh, but you mean like put the x inside the bracket somehow? Yeah. Well, um, you can do that, but you know, if you think of something like two plus two, like something times something else squared, this is not the same as the square. You can't just put number <clears throat> inside of the square. Uh, this is yeah. this is eighteen, and this is thirty six. What you can you can still do it if you you know what is true is that if you have the same power, you can combine them. So you need to have write both as squares. Uh, and you can write x as a square, it's the square of the square roots. Um, so we can combine both into the same brackets by going like this. Um, I, I think, so, so this integral, this is the same as the integral of uh, x squared root x plus. Uh, of this whole thing. Um, so now what, what do I do now? Like use the integral equation. Uh, how do I do that? See. Your substitution. Mm -hmm. What's what's you then if I'm gonna do your substitution? you just do like x squared square root of x plus square root of x as u and then it's going to be like u squared okay so this is u squared dx uh, but the thing is if you do your substitution um you need to replace this by Um, to, so you need to replace this by something 
something du. Um, otherwise, you would just make anything you want to integrate equal to u, and that would be it. Um, so, uh, how does this look like? You need to make du equals the derivative of this whole thing. And the derivative, uh, well, this is, well, this is x to the 5 half and x to the 1 half. So the derivative is 5 half x to the 3 half plus 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So this is really, like this, um, which to me looks kind of nasty. Um, this looks more complicated. I don't think we made the problem easier. Um, I still, I mean, I need to somehow write this in terms of you. And I don't know how to do that right now. So instead, um, I'm, I'm not gonna combine, I don't like going this route because basically what I did, what I got here to me just looks more complicated than before. I don't think I, I don't think the problem got easier. So um, what else can I try? What if you expand the x squared plus one squared first? Well, um, I can definitely do that and then see see what happens. You you have a square, so there's a formula for this. Um, and also a square is just multiplied by itself. So you can use the distributive law uh, to just multiply this out or if you're feeling really, really, really like it's a very special day and uh, you can foil it. Um, but I would try to only foil like on alternating weekends or something like that. Why can't you just do this? Um, so what Serene and Matthew are saying, I don't have an answer. I don't, I mean, we could try that too. Um, let me finish this and then we'll try that. So when you expand the square, it looks like this. And then I have x times x to the fourth plus 2x squared plus 1. The x, and since I'm expanding y sub there, why not just multiply the x in there too? And now this looks like the integral of a polynomial. I know how to do those. The integral of x to the n is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. There's the power uh, rule of, of derivatives. So this integral is just x to the 6 divided by 6 plus 2 x to the 4 divided by 4 plus x squared divided by 2. Um, not the x, I'm, I'm done. This is the integral. So so that's how you can do it. Um, are any questions? So another way to do it, um, which is going to get us the same answer. And what Sam and Serene were saying um, is you look at this and you, and you say, well, um, this is the derivative of the other thing. So 
the other thing should become should become u makes u equals x squared plus one du is going to be 2x dx which is almost basically almost x dx um the the one half doesn't bother me that much so um if you do a substitution you got u squared this is x squared plus one squared and then you get um, one half du and this part is um, x dx and that accounts for everything I had before. So there's no x's there, which means I, I did it correctly. If there's x's left over, that's when we're, you're in trouble. Um, so can I do the integral of u squared over two divided by uh, u squared over two? respect to you well yes i can because again it's a it's a polynomial it's just u cubed divided by three and then times one half and if you if you make um so I guess this is one sixth u cubed plus c if you undo the substitution this is one sixth x squared plus one cubed. And unless someone tells me otherwise, um, I think this also works. I think I didn't make a mistake. Mm. Okay. So I got x to the six plus x to the four divided by two plus x squared divided by two and also x squared plus one cubed. That's answer. Um, so did I get two different answers? <laughs> um, because I probably shouldn't, right? There should be just one answer. Because if, I mean, if I if I didn't get the same answer, I definitely made a mistake. Oh, this is not what I got. Um, there was a um, there was a sixth here. Yeah. Well, we only factor in one six on one of the x squared plus ones and like equal that to zero. And that way we get like two different answers. Why would I didn't understand why it would make it equal to zero? To figure out what x equals. I don't know what x equals. I'm just, I mean, the answer is the whole formula. Yeah, true. Um, but I mean, either, I mean, well, is the answer this one or is the answer the other one or are these, maybe they're the same function. Let's see, let's graph them. Um, no. Oh yeah, so six divided by six. x to the fourth divided by two plus x squared divided by two. So that's one of them. And the other one is x cubed plus one squared. Wait, what? No, x squared plus one cubed multiplied by one sixth. Six. Six. Um, well, look at that, they're not the same. 
Just plug in the next value and see if you get the same answer. That's a good idea. Mm. Plug in um, x equals zero. This one gives me zero. This one gives me one sixth. Um, plugging uh, x equals this one. Here I get one sixth plus one half plus one half, which is seven sixth. Um, here I get one sixth times two cubed. Um, Which is eight six. Hmm. Also, they're not the same. So what? Ha so what happens? All right, let's um, let's see what happens. So they're not the same, but that doesn't matter because I have this one on one side. Um, on the other side, I have x squared plus one cubed. And I can expand this one too. I guess it's it's the square times the same thing again. So one sixth x to the fourth plus two x squared plus one. And then multiply once again by x squared plus one. x to the sixth, two x to the fourth, x squared, x to the fourth, two x squared. I mean, it's also a formula for the cube, but that gives me x to the sixth plus uh, four x to the fourth plus, oh no, not four, three. Three x to the fourth plus three x squared plus one. And that is, um, x to the sixth divided by six, and then three sixths is x to the fourth halves, x squared halves, and then one sixth. So these are the same, except that this one has a constant. So up to a constant, they're the same, which means that they have the same derivative, which is all I care about. All right, so I didn't do this problem wrong. Awesome. Great. Well, unless you have, do you have any urgent questions that should um, stop us from 